ahead towards the end of the conference, does the World Trade Organization have any sense uh, of the commitments that member countries are willing to make? We've had two fantastic achievements. Finalization of the expansion of the Information Technology Agreement. This is an agreement that covers $1.3 trillion in trade each year. That's about 10% of the total. It's more than automotive. It's more than textiles and steel and iron put together. So that's fantastic. And then the second thing, which was, which was really great, was that um, ministers approved the accession of Liberia. Uh, an African country, an, a least developed country, into our ranks. The differences between developed and developing countries seem to have taken the spotlight at this conference, especially uh, surrounding the Doha round of talks uh, in 2001. Now, how are member countries approaching these issues? Well, there, it, it, in, in, in one area, perhaps. Uh, but when you look across the full spectrum of the 15 issues, if it was only north-south, it would be a lot easier to fix. But you have some issues where you have least developed countries who are not in alignment with each other. Uh, but on the question of the Doha round itself and whether it should be reaffirmed or whether it should be set aside and another approach uh, tried, it is very much along the lines that you've said. Uh, and what's interesting about it is that the, the, the developing countries worry that what we've achieved over the last 14 years in terms of the parameters of a deal, we haven't really agreed on anything, but we have parameters, which very much has development at its heart. Now, not everyone is satisfied with the progress, but it's clear that, that it's leaning in the direction of a development outcome. And they worry that if the Doha round were to be abandoned, these, these important principles, these important uh, 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 achievements might go uh, really out the window. Uh, on the other side, the advanced countries say, well, we've been at this for 14 years, we have not really made sufficient progress, and we would like to start talking about new issues. And by the way, many, many countries, developed, developing, even least developed, are keen to talk about new issues. And what are some of the new issues that have come to the forefront? In, in October at our General Council, a group of developing countries led by Philippines and Malaysia suggested that we have an agenda um, item that would look at ways to enhance the participation of micro, small and medium sized enterprises, of which there are many here in Kenya, uh, enhance their participation in the global trading system because very often entrepreneurs are looking to try and get into new markets but they think it's too complicated but when you have all of this e-commerce activity you can ship things e electronically in ways that were before impossible and people are looking to try and expand and I know that's happening here a lot so uh, that's an issue people have talked about they've talked about food security energy investment competition uh, and and the point here is that these issues are being taken up in regional fora now how has Africa's changing role in the global economy uh, in terms of Africa's industrialization fit into the round of talks at the 10th ministerial conference? Africa is just about the most dynamic region on earth right now. It's growing faster than any other continent. Its population is the most youthful. Exports from Africa in the last 20 years have gone up more than five-fold. Still, the continent's share of world trade has been pretty much the same as it's been. Um, you've seen technological advance uh, here in Africa enabling these entrepreneurs of which we've spoken to participate more in trade. The notion of taking down barriers between African countries. Only 12% of African exports go to other African countries. That has to be addressed, and clearly the leaders of Africa's countries have recognized this. Are you optimistic that we'll be able to see some sort of resolution uh, this time around, compared to uh, the ninth ministerial conference that took place in 2013 in Bali? Let's just say I'm hopeful. Hope springs eternal. Um, our chair, uh, Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohammed, is fantastic. We have never had a chair who is as experienced in WTO matters as she. She's shown great leadership. Our director general is, is brilliant when it comes to the, the technical detail and the organization of processes. The two of them make a great team. If anyone can do it, the two of them can. Uh, but it's, a, it's going to be a real challenge. There's so much that's still to be done, and all of these things are interlinked.